Hello, this is Hello, sir. How are you? I'm good, thank you. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. I'm Gary. Sorry, I'm a little bit late. I'm sitting in the courthouse and had a schedule. Yeah. It ended at 1 o'clock. Can I get you water? You already got me water. Good. Yeah, thank you. Did you meet Kendall? I did. Great. Want to start? Well, uh, I would like to thank you for agreeing to meet with me. So, for sure. Um, yeah, that's wrong. All right. So, um, I will I will go over the very brief um, version mm -hmm. of everything that has happened that has led to me coming seeing you here today. And um, the longer version will take us about two hours to go over. But afterwards, okay. if you have any clarifying questions, anything mm -hmm. that's not clear, mm -hmm. any videos or audio or text you would like to see. Uh, I have all that document and I can provide that to you. So I have overwhelming evidence to prove everything that I'm claiming here, okay? So um, in the fall of 2015, my wife and I rented a duplex that had an upper level and a lower level. Mm -hmm. And in the lease, um, it said that we would have to share the electric bill 50-50 with the neighbors in the lower unit. Uh, there were no neighbors there at the time. and my landlord said, well, if you know somebody who would like to rent that, you could do that. I was against the whole 50-50 thing, and I immediately brought up one thing that happens in Steamboat a lot that would immediately make it a problem to split electricity 50-50 with strangers, okay? And that's growing pop. Right. A lot of people do it around consumes here. Consumes electricity. Consumes a lot of electricity. Right. So I told them that would be a problem. They promised me that's not going to happen, no problem. So we met a couple that we kind of run into each other before in Steamboat, but we've never been friends or hang out before. They I, they said they were looking for a place. And I knew that um, the guy is a professional pot grower for Golden Leaf, and his wife is a manager at the other dispensary. It used to be Natural Choice and Cherries and Air there now. So I knew that about them, but again, I didn't use that or didn't see that at the time something that you should discriminate against people because they work in a certain industry or assume anything about them. So I said, no problem, you guys can come rent it, but here's the thing that could be a problem. If you guys promise not to grow a pot on our electric bill, you can move in. So we move in there, a couple months go on. Did you get any of that in writing? Um, so uh, in the lease, I made, made the landlord put in the lease that it says that um, electricity at the house should be only used for normal household purposes, okay? So if there is a house with history, right, with the electric company for using electricity, a reasonable person would assume that the normal use of electricity should pretty much stay within the limits of what has been there okay. before, right? If the electric went up threefold from $100 to $350, you would assume that something extra is being plugged into the house that wasn't there before, right? Okay. Yeah. So okay. after that, cool. yeah, they ended up arguing that a greenhouse okay. outside, 30 by 50 feet, with over 10 plants in there, is normal use of electricity. The point of this is that my landlord did not have a case against me. Mm -hmm. If he did, all the rest of this would never be necessary. So he could have just done it legal way, I would have nothing to say, and you would never have the reason to have me here. So, okay. a few months go on, immediately after this guy moves in, traffic starts coming to our house. Which, at first, we didn't think much of, okay? People move in, people come visit them, right? The traffic escalated to where, before sunrise and past midnight, people would pull into our driveway on the end of a dead-end street, right? Not even park their car or turn them off, run into the house, run back in their cars and leave. Over 50 people a day. Okay? And I have this documented because I ended up having to put cameras for all this. Our electric bill went up from, 100, uh, from $90 to $300 in September. It wasn't even winter yet. Mm -hmm. um, me and my wife, because we moved in there first, had the electric bill and the propane bill on our name. And there was a verbal agreement about that, which was our fault that um, I, I tried to insist on putting that in writing and I ended up ev being evicted. Um, where we were carrying a balance of anywhere between 800 to $1,100 for the bills, 
okay, after a few months, where they, they had just had a promise that they're going to pay us half of that bill. Mm -hmm. I, I started complaining to the landlord about this. I said, this is outrageous. There's traffic to our house, and I can tell you they're selling pot out of our house. I walked into a garage where we're sharing the garage. There's a big plastic container with pot rolled up in little things with cash underneath the container. Okay, it doesn't take a detective to figure out what's going on there with all the people coming and living out of our house. Yes. So I complained to the landlord. He said, um, th that's between you tenants, the whole electric bill. I don't care. As far as the pot dealings, so if, it's, if it's a crime, if he's breaking the law, call the police. Mm -hmm. Okay. So after all this, oh, oh, before that happens, I'm sorry, I forgot to mention very important things on how I ended up calling the cops. I wake up one morning, I go to work at 9 a.m. My wife calls me about 30 minutes later. She says, Jeff, who is the guy who lives downstairs who's selling pot out of our house, breaks into our house, comes into an internal door that connects the two units, and lets himself into our house and yells at my wife in the morning. She's still in the bedroom. Okay, nobody opens the door, nobody lets him in. And he claims that one of these people that keeps coming in and out that garage just took the pot and the money and left. It, big surprise, right? So, and he assumed that it was us, my wife and me that took the money and the pot from the garage. And I said, hey, how about these 50 people a day that visit you? And they claim, oh, we know all those people, they wouldn't have done that, okay? He does that. Um, after that, he, they, they, they tell me the traffic will stop. They replace the plastic transparent container with an opaque black container with still cash underneath. And I have pictures of all that that has happened. So I want to make sure I understand what you're saying. You, you have a civil dispute with your mayor. Or the, with your, with your neighbor, that's how it started. With your neighbor. And you went to the landlord, and the landlord washed said, his hands and said, care. I don't care. Okay. Called the police. Yes, so I called the police. Mm -hmm. The police shows up, and mm -hmm. I explained to him everything that I explained to you. I said, right now they're selling pot out of our house. They're enormous. I mean, I got video, security video of them coming up with boxes of pot, big plants. We're talking pounds and pounds. He texts me one day. He's like, hey, a friend of mine is going to come to the house. Can you go to my house and weigh um, like half an ounce of weed or something? And I told him, look, this whole thing that you're doing at our house needs to stop. And he told me, it's my house, I can do whatever I want. That's what he said. Okay, so that traffic is coming to our house. My wife's purse disappears out of her car that's parked outside. Never, nothing like that has happened to us. Cop shows up. So this you've is had, so they stole things from you? And I, I don't know if they and did. And they accused you the of stealing things from them. Exactly. And you have well, documentation and evidence of all of this. I do. Well, nobody accused me of anything until I called the police. Okay, so this is called rebuttal charges. Cops are very familiar with it. Okay. When after I call the police on you for an actual crime, you're like, oh yeah, well he's told my something. And without civil, any evidence. Classic civil or, disputes, that's what happens. People try and retaliate and rebuttal. Yeah. Well, if I told you somebody got murdered outside, you would investigate that, especially if I have overwhelming evidence and things inclined to do that. Or that if somebody's selling pot out of our Is it illegal to sell pot out of people's homes in Steamboat? Are you asking me about the yes, law? Yes, yeah. Is it illegal to... Uh, I don't know. You don't know if it's illegal to sell uh, out of legal. residential homes? Pot's legal. In, 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 marijuana's legal. In vodka Colorado. is legal too, right? Uh, you know if it's is? legal for me to sell vodka out of our home? I, you know, I'm not sure I want to get sucked into legal arguments. I, I don't know. I, I feel like you're being dishonest. It's pretty obvious. I mean, you're the city manager. You know if something is illegal or not. But that's fine. So I call the police, they come to my house, he records all this I told you, then he turns off his camera, looking me in the face. I've heard, okay? of, yeah, I heard that at the council meeting. For six minutes. And then he turns it back on. And this is documented by the police, not me. If you go there, ask for the record, you see there's a body camera talking to Moses, six minutes are missing. Right, okay? I think the chief has acknowledged that, right? He's acknowledged that, okay, so he, yes, he's acknowledged that, but that, that doesn't like help my situation at all. He's acknowledged okay. that about a, two years later. So you're throwing a lot of data at me, Moses. I, it's I really hard to follow and you're kind of jumping around, but I understand you have a civil dispute with your neighbor. Uh, the landlord doesn't care. There's somebody allegedly selling drugs out of their out of their mm -hmm. house mm -hmm. illegally, and mm -hmm. I don't know enough about marijuana law to tell you. I can tell you it's illegal. It's illegal. And it, selling vodka because, because there's caretakers, also there's illegal. growers. Caretakers can sell to medicinal people. So when you ask me a not out of residential homes, if they not can, out of residential, well, they can't it. sell it out of the residential. Mm -hmm. I don't, know, have I don't know the details of all well, of so I don't know the details of yeah. all of the liquor and That's why we're discussing so. all this, because you're in and charge of this, right? I'm not a lawyer, this, right? but I'm not a lawyer. Yes. You're asking me legal questions, so okay. I'm just claiming ignorance. I don't know. There's all these yeah, layers of marijuana law. There's medical, there's growers, there's caretakers, there's yes. givers. 
uh, and I don't know if I just don't know. Okay, so, okay. Sorry. So you walk into a factory and I'm in charge, mm -hmm. and you ask me all these questions that are under my jurisdiction, and I claim ignorance, and my managers and everybody claims ignorance. Does I that can, make you feel I can tell you. I can tell you, Moses. I don't know everything that goes on in this city at every department at every division. People can come up and ask me questions. Did you know what this employee did at this hour on this afternoon? Do you want to know? I may not know. Okay. I so, don't so know that's all. I'm not, I'm not a superhuman being. Yeah. Okay. I don't I'm know sure. I understand that. I'm a human I'm being. I understand. Got so it? am I. Okay. Right? Great. I'm Thanks. also a human whose home has been violated, whose rights have been okay. violated, whose name has been violated. So okay. I'm a human too. And so is my wife, who's sure. been yelled at in our home. All right. So you got to okay. back up. Calm down and tell so yeah, let's understand that we're all human here. Right. So I call the police. They come over. They say they're not. They, they, he literally tells me we do not care about pot. We do not mm -hmm. care if this guy broke into your house, yelled at your wife. We don't care if he's on pot. Meanwhile, the guy's on probation while doing all these things. Okay, and they know the cop knew that. He told me they know him from before. He didn't tell me what. So he goes away. I, after being an immigrant in this country, okay, here on a green card visa, on, another, on a student visa, mm -hmm. okay, I, sure. after the cop told me they don't care, I just bought what I was going to do, right? I got home, I told my wife, we're going to have to pack our stuff and we're going to have to move because this is the situation in this house. Our bill is crazy. Cops don't care, landlord don't care. She says, okay, we're still looking for a place. Okay. It's winter, okay? Right. Few days pass. This guy, who's an alcoholic on probation for drunk driving, this guy? Jeff uh, Wanzerski, the pot grower for Golden Leaf, oh. who also at the same time holds a license to work in the pot industry that supposedly tells that somebody is not a criminal and they should be allowed to work with pot. So this guy on probation holds that license, does all this to me. He gets drunk and for hours, <laughs> my walls, whoa, 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 whoa. right? Okay. Just like that, for hours. Down. So, I'm just okay. trying to get, uh, convey to you what I went through and my wife as a human being. I did did that disturb you right now? Right? That went on for hours at our house. Okay? And I have it on video. I called 911 with my wife uh, crying, scared. This guy came over to our front door banging, say, hey, come out, you Russian piece of shit. Let's fight. Let's do this. Okay? Drunk with his friends and everything. I called 911. Okay? Cops show up to my house. Okay? With body cameras. They record everything, they talk to me, three officers go talk to him, and I have zero body camera footage of their interaction with them, okay? They, they, when I say, where is the body camera, they say it's deleted. They've given me three different answers. It's deleted, there was no crime on it, there was no body camera footage uh, in the beginning. That's all, all those three versions I've heard officially in writing. And then afterwards, they popped up with the body camera of me, but not a body camera of him. So I can show you, and I can show to the court what shape this guy was in that night, okay? They come up to me say... What, what time frame are we talking about? Are we still talking about fall of 2015? Uh, this is fall 2016. This so th this starts, later. yeah, okay. this starts 23 minutes. Okay. I, I put up with this for a long mm -hmm. time before I called the and police. And you were evicted. And when were you evicted? So after I called the police, my landlord got really upset that I called the police. Oh, and he goodness. stopped talking to me. Okay? okay. He told the cops he's going to evict me because I'm causing trouble. Obviously, not wanting this drug dealing going on at my house it was causing trouble. So he said he's going to evict me. But he had nothing to evict me for. Okay, you can look up on all this is public record that they had nothing against me, not criminal, not civil, not even a complaint in verbal or writing that I've been causing any problems over there. It all happened after I called the cops. Okay, so that night when this happens, cops come to me and I have that on body camera because they have the video of talking to me, say, excuse me, they say, don't go talk to him, don't interact with him, you're moving out, just act like he doesn't exist until you're out of here. All this enables and empowers this guy, alcoholic drug dealer Jeff Wanzerski, who acts, uh, starts acting more and more aggressively towards me. Seven days or five days exactly passed from that night that cop told us not to interact with each other, and I have not. When I've seen him outside, I haven't been outside, I haven't said one word to him. All documented. I wake up January 1st. After a night of partying and drinking, Mr. Wanzerski comes outside takes some construction trash from that's sitting next to our dumpster and throws it in my car on video, okay, on my security camera. Walks towards our house and he looks at my camera and says, pick up your trash, you fucking piece of shit. And all this is on video. I've shown this to the police commander, to the chief, to everyone, okay? 
I don't call the police at that time. I text him and the landlord with that video. I'm trying to de-escalate this situation and leave. I text him and the landlord with the video of him throwing that trash at my car, and I say, can you just pick this up so I don't have to call the police? Okay? Landlord tells me, you're doing that to yourself. I'm doing that to myself. Okay? This guy tells me, in text, that's also in writing, that the cops saw the day they showed up. He says, you pick it up, you fucking slob, it's your trash, and don't text me anymore. That's his response to me asking him politely to pick up the trash. He threw at my car, okay? After this happens, he, uh, I go to work, I come back, he has taken the drywall from that trash, put it on my walkway, where I have to step on that to walk inside of my house in January 1st. There was snow on the ground, he put the drywall, flat sheet of drywall, more snow came on top of that. I step on that drywall as I'm walking home, I slide and I jam my toe with my shoe in the corner of a 2 by 4 I break my toe, it's bleeding inside of my foot. Okay, I have pictures of all that. I have medical records. I've seen my doctor. Okay, with my toe bleeding inside of my foot, I text this guy that I'll be waiting for you tonight when you come home to see what the fuck you want from me. Okay, and I, I'm sitting inside. I see him. He comes home from work, takes the drywall one more time after it's a sled on the road, and just drums it again for the fourth time that day on my porch that's how blunt this guy feels because cops just came five times and didn't do anything to him while he's on probation okay with that broken toe so i go outside i yell at him i just get in his face and i yell i said what the fuck do you want from me and he's backing up he says I'm, I'm trying to move out of here and everything i don't want anything and he's sliding falling in the snow i don't touch him nothing i'm all dry no signs of any kind of fight on me he gets up goes inside says i'm calling the cops you're going to jail he calls the cops. Cops show up. The same exact cop that was there five days ago telling that guy, supposedly, because that guy under court later said that cops didn't say that to him, to leave me alone. Okay? Drunk guy threatens me and my wife, bangs on my wall. I call the cops. Supposedly, they tell him not to interact with me. Tell me not to interact with him. I don't interact with him. Five days later, I wake up to this drywall at my car, to all those messages. They come over, and they say, he says that I... J jumped on him with my fingers on his throat. I'm 250 pounds. Okay, he's about 110. He says, I was, I pushed him in the snow, got with my fingers on his throat, choking him. He fought his way out from underneath me. Okay, ran inside, called the cops. Okay, and on the body cam video, because I have the body cam videos from this incident because they pressed charges against me, so they made sure they preserved that. Um, there, there was no signs of fight of any kind on me. He, he doesn't even have any signs of a real fight or anything on me. They claim his neck was red, which in the winter that could happen from nothing, that could happen from your color. He uh, did not have like any real bruises, like blue or black or anything like that. He didn't know any medical attention whatsoever. An ambulance came, checked him, and left. So as the ambulance is down there checking him for supposedly being strangled by a 250 pound guy, I tell the cops on the camera, I said, my toe is broken. Could they check on this too? Because this happened to me here today he caused this to me they they did not say nothing to that and they leave the let the ambulance leave okay so they don't check me medically i go to a doctor next morning uh, based on these guys words and no other evidence they press charges against me that night okay the, the police the same officer that came five days later did nothing they say throwing drywall the police says that throwing drywall at my car is not a crime okay so I could go outside right now, throw a drywall at your car, and go home. And there's nothing you can do about it, Mr. City Manager. So that, that's the, what the police told, tells me, okay? I come here to the municipal prosecutor, who now, so when they started so evicting what, what me. what time frame are we at now? Moses? So this is, fall January, this is January, so this is all happening two fall years 20, ago? Um, yeah, this is all happening fall 2016. Okay. Right. At the time, I um, immediately, as this happens, I talk to um, I talk to the police commander. I complain that they're not investigating the drug dealing and everything. My landlord, as soon as I call the police, very first time hires Mr. Paul Sachs. Do you know who Mr. Paul Sachs is? No. Yeah. Who is he? He's the municipal judge. He's the municipal judge and also practicing attorney He's in a town. Attorney. Right. Yeah. He Do works you... for us on a contract. I, oh, great. Yeah, there's no conflict of interest there either. So uh, how often, what is there? There's supposed to be a two-year review of the municipal judge, right? Mm -hmm. does, does that happen every two years? 
It's happening, yeah, now. Are these, there any these records? Contracts, these contract, uh, I don't know if there are records. There are, there are some surveys done and sent out. You could, you could I tried to look for those records. records request. It's I, in the process. This understand. contract is coming up on November 13th before council. This year? Yeah. Oh, great. I'll be, you have made sure to be there to testify to the council about this. So, I, I, are you I familiar? To tell you that. It's a little paragraph, because I looked this up and I read about it. I'm not a lawyer either, and I've never dealt with police. I'm 32 years old. Before this incident, never charged with any crime in my entire life. I've been in Steamboat for 10 years, zero, never interacted with the police. I didn't even know there was a municipal court over here. Mm -hmm. Never dealt, I'm an IT guy. I mind my own business. And that's what I do. I don't interact with people. I don't harass anybody. Municipal judge gets hired to um, sue me and evict me. Exactly. Um, uh, so the landlord hired the municipal judge? Exactly. Is that what happened? To evict me. And yes. when did that happen? That happened as soon as I called. Within a couple of days after I called the police the for the drug dealing. That. that would be, I can get you an exact date. That would be... Uh, Yeah, I'm not sure if I can get you exact date when he hired him. I can tell you the date that I got. You have a month and a year? I mean, um, you're giving me so, such detail. So, you should yeah, be able to remember. I, I can look that up. Um, so was it's that gonna before be... your, was it before um, the interaction with the drywall and everything? Exactly. It was all before that. that. Oh, yeah. That, those are the things that made him empowered and made the police not care about my case. Um, this happened as soon. So the landlord hired the municipal judge. To evict right. me. To right. evict you? Yes. Okay. And you were evicted when? And I was evicted January 27th. Of what um, year? 25 or 27th of 2017. Oh, I see. Okay. Yep. So, so that, that, thing, right. that thing went apart. So I said I was going to go to court and I was going to go mm -hmm. to a jury. I was never allowed to have a jury or a trial, which is um, another thing. So. Oh, the things that uh, I'm not going to ask you to be responsible for or ask you to even answer to me to, okay? Everything that has to do with my addiction, with the judgment against me, anything else, that's between me and Judge Garrett and the court and everything. Yeah, I don't, to, I don't have Exactly, exactly. Over. And I'm not asking you, know you for that, any so. of that. Exactly. So that trial I didn't have. The criminal case that they pressed these charges against me, now that's under you and you guys should care about this and look into this. Mm -hmm. There have been several cases, and this is the more general part of this because this kind of thing does not happen in a healthy environment, okay? They don't all, all of a sudden, be turning off their camera, feeling comfortable, and, and putting it on the record officially, right? You can't even hide that. that you can look that up. And um, that, that happened in fall of 2016? Fall of 2016, yes. Yep, yep, exactly. And, um, but so, you don't have a date when the landlord hired Judge Sachs? I can tell you definitely was before any of my problems with the law started, that's for sure. So that's when he, he hired him before any of my and, problems and with the when, law. when did you call the PD? Um, uh, it was December 2016. I don't remember the exact date. Okay. But, all right. Um, it's just, I'm just trying to get this. And I can email you all these dates uh, if those are important to you. I can, because I have all these records. I mean, uh, you can the right click on the body camera and it tells you when it was created and all that. Okay. So, yeah. and I have the video of what I told the officer who didn't do anything about it. It was the same officer that that other kid ran away from and ended up in the river. Okay, if I was in a strange town in the middle of the night and the officer turned off his camera, I don't know what he's gonna do to me now. Okay, so I might have run from him too. So these things are going around. Officers feel like justice is some kind of commodity. They can trade in for somebody's phone number. They can trade in for favors with the, the judge or other things. So that, that's why this thing needs to be more transparent and these things need to be talked about. And you, you know that the PD has history of issues and lawsuits and the city has paid for those, right? Mm -hmm. At least you've heard about that. So I that's something read that all isn't... seven of the reports. Exactly. So these are things that need to be paid. Those are the people who went through all the trouble that I'm going to to fight this. How many of them never said anything? How many of them just thought that this is too big, too scary of a thing to deal with? Okay. So they, they pressed three charges in total within the first three weeks after they decided the landlord hired the, the police pressed the charges. Three charges mm -hmm. in three weeks against well, somebody who's charges. never had any two charges of disorderly conduct, which could be as much as cursing in public, and one of reckless driving. Okay. okay. All of those charges were later dismissed. Mm -hmm. 
dismissed, meaning they weren't qualified enough to go. Uh, two were dismissed here in the municipal court, but they insisted on prosecuting me on the other one. Uh, the same judge? The first one. Um, yeah, the, the last one, no, two of them didn't even get to a judge. The uh, one of the disorderly and the reckless driving again because they just made that up. So there was no body camera footage of me interacting with the officer that pressed those charges. You press charges. Let's see the video. How did this thing evolve? Where do you conclude that you're gonna have to press charges? So they didn't no have video. a case. And did you exactly. talk with the municipal prosecutor? I talked to the that? municipal prosecutor. Yes, exactly. And that? I told her everything. I told you. It's kind of a pretty and then she strong case, right? And did uh, dismissing. No, cases. two out of three. She two said, here's the thing, we press three charges against you. How about we dismiss two and you agree to plead guilty to one? So it was a plea bargain. Yeah, that's what they, so and they I said it. no to all of that. Exactly. Okay. You can press 200 charges against me today if you want to. And what Not was the one that, that you wanted That supposedly I strangled that guy. That, so that an matter. assault. Yes. Charge. Well, they didn't charge me with assault, right? Okay. So think about that. If I get on well, I don't know all the laws, but... I mean, but hey, you in know, you knew right? enough to suggest uh, assault. Okay, come on, don't don't claim so much ignorance. People well, gonna think that's what it That's the only word I know. But exactly, if you're, but if you're accused of strangling someone, that's probably that, assault. I can ask a toddler. Hey, what is the and what is it called? It Fighting? could be called uh, assault. No, exactly. That's what I mean. No, you did it. Uh, you claimed it exactly. But they so what? Answer. So you're not answering my question. So if it wasn't assault. What did they charge? They you charged with? me with disorderly conduct. Disorderly conduct. Exactly. Great. Thank right. you. That's what I'm trying to get to. All right. I've heard of that. Yes, but they said that what they believe this guy, and they believe what he says happened happened, mm -hmm. but they're not pressing charges for assault or attempted murder. Okay, if so you've got a disorderly conduct charge against you, and then what exactly. happened after that, Moses? So I show up here to court, mm -hmm. and I meet Mr. Sachs. Mm -hmm. Five days before he's supposed to be a, a lawyer against me in this court where I'm being evicted, he sees me as a judge in his court. Because he had his buddies at the police make sure to send me to him so he can make, let me know who he is. Okay? So there he tells me that for a charge of disorderly conduct, they could revoke my green card and have me deported. The That's judge told me. you that. Yes, yes. And the city but prosecutor. You didn't see, but you went. But it, you didn't go through the city prosecutor this time. I went to the city prosecutor in the beginning, a couple times. Yeah. It was two times. She said they're gonna prosecute, and I told her everything I told you. I showed the video. She said, "I trust the police. I'm gonna prosecute." Okay. This case is worth our city money, my hours, and everybody. That's what she told you. Okay. And we're gonna prosecute and this gonna case prosecute. on Thanks based on this that exactly. That so I told her, "What about all this evidence I have?" She said, "Our judge will not let you show any evidence." I have that on audio. I, the reason I started recording these things is because of the absurd things they told me. So our city prosecutors told me, police can come to my house, see a guy selling heroin right next sitting to next to me, and I'm yelling at him, and they can choose to arrest me and you not him. It was marijuana, and not that's marijuana. it doesn't matter what it, it's a crime. The point is it's a crime. Oh, you're making a point. It's as okay. illegal as that. Saying. Okay, so yes, he can be selling pot, he could be throwing drywall at somebody's car, and I say, hey, don't do that, they could choose to charge me with, I say, hey, don't fucking do that, they can charge me with the cursing in public, but do nothing to him, and that's perfectly legal and fine, and it's called discretion, mm -hmm. right? Which, I don't know what's the difference between that and straight up discriminating against somebody when all the evidence and the common sense is on this side, but prosecution goes on that side. So that's so, called discretion. That, so you're talking that's what they the call courts. that. That's what so they that's call what the that. Called it was discretion. Exactly. In okay. objective world, I call that malicious prosecution. Mm -hmm. When you don't like somebody and you prosecute them because the other thing she said, I know this judge for 30 years, he has imperfect credibility and she knew and discussed the civil case against me while prosecuting me for this supposed criminal action okay and uh, all these three charges so they dragged this here for several months you and you have the right to a speedy trial when accused of a crime so you can move on with your life so if I accuse you of a crime you can go to court present evidence found guilty or not guilty and move on with your life right that's why it's called the right of speedy trial. My trial for that accusation went on for seven months. Okay? It took them seven months to prosecute a disorderly conduct, the simplest, lowest charge on the books here. 
It took him seven months. That's malicious prosecution. That caused enormous trouble, L legal expenses. Thousands of dollars are spent on lawyers in a place where they had no case. So is the prosecutor going to claim ignorance too when the judge saw that this is a clearly illegal case, threw it out in 20 minutes, yet the seven months before that, this prosecutor couldn't see that this is a pointless case and they shouldn't prosecute. If that's the case, maybe you should fire the prosecutor and hire somebody who understands the law and knows what case will or will not make it to court before wasting the city's resources for seven months prosecuting somebody with a clean record who's never had a problem before based on the words of a guy on probation with missing body camera footage. The officers who wrote those things weren't even here. Right. So after I uh, said all these things, so I started posting all these things on Facebook. That's when everybody got really mad with me, and that's when they stopped all this shady activity of prosecuting me. And after that, I've got a, a real case in the, uh, the higher court where I, I got my case dismissed and so on. So when that happened, and they agreed to uh, get rid of this case, they did not dismiss me my case. Okay, they came up with another trick. How many coincidences are you supposed to believe in before you believe something is a conspiracy? So all the body camera footage nitpicked, okay? Every photo camera that every footage that doesn't prove my case and has just me angry and yelling, right, is available. They have all those records. Every record of the other side is not available. So the cop comes to our house, talks to two of us, video of me available, video of you not available. Mm -hmm. how, how do you explain that? You feel right? like you've been discriminated against? That's what I'm hearing you say. Do you feel like I've been discriminated against? Based on what you're saying, yeah, it sounds like it. it sounds like it, right? And I'm hearing one side of the story. I'm not a judge. I'm sure, you know, I, and you're jumping all over the place. It's very difficult to follow you, Moses. I mean, that's why I wrote everything down, yeah. so I just explained. Before the cops came, there were drug dealing going on. Mm -hmm. I called the cops. Mm -hmm. At the same time, mm -hmm. city, my, uh, city judge got hired to evict me. And the cops, if you refuse to do anything about that, that's number one, right? Number two, emboldened by all that, the alcoholic drug dealer starts harassing me and my family daily. Mm -hmm. I call the police. They come again and refuse to do anything about it. They allow that to go on, okay? Why? Because it helps their judge's case. If they had admitted that any kind of crimes, anything is going on against me, how could you win a case to evict me? They couldn't do that. Okay, so that's what was going so on. You're, so you're alleging, you believe that there's conspiracy between the police department and the court yes, and the judge yes, on your and case. A, yeah, and a conspiracy okay. is a kind of a big word that implies a lot of things, but yeah. I'm going to say that knowingly, knowing each other, and a, and a lot of these talkings, they've admitted it, the city prosecutor, who's supposed to be impartial and prosecute only case that should be prosecuted objectively from a legal standpoint, tells me she's going to do it because the judge is her friend and the judge won't allow me to present evidence. She's telling me she's going to prosecute me not because she believes I'm guilty, but because she believes the judge won't allow me to present the evidence that I'm innocent. Does yeah. that sound like something that a good prosecutor should be doing? That's concerning. Yeah, so that's exactly. That's like, what are you using these resources for? Are you using these resources to bully people? Right? Yeah. So is it concerning when the police presses three charges against somebody with a clean record and zero of those charges, zero out of three, make it to a trial? So what happened to the disorderly conduct charge? What was the outcome of that? So after the prosecuting me for seven months, insisting that the, in front of the judge, Garrett, that this is a real oh, case. So Judge Sachs isn't the judge anymore. So after I complained. Is this a different court? Yeah, yeah, so I'm um, sorry, let me tell you how it went to the other court. Okay, All good. this happened here, I started posting this on Facebook, said this is absurd. A judge who's been hired to sue me is now prosecuting my criminal case. Did, so he ever, me did back Judge here. Sachs ever remove himself from the case? After he threatened me with deportation, after I complained, he did. And here's how he removed himself from the case, because that's important, how you remove yourself from a case. Okay, He said... There's a conflict of interest with me, mm -hmm. so my assistant will be your judge. And he said that twice, and I have that recorded. So he emphasized that twice to send me the message that my assistant will be your judge. Mm -hmm. Does that make me feel that I'm getting a fair trial when his assistant is going to be my judge? Okay. In your opinion, would you feel that you're getting a fair trial if the judge that has a case against you is 
paid to sue you and has great incentive in finding you guilty tells you his assistant is going to be your judge. I understand your concern. Exactly. So I said, that's doesn't. I said, I'm not going to come back to your court. Okay. I said, this is a clown court. You guys don't take your job seriously. I'm not coming ba back. Send the cops to arrest me and let's go to a real court. Let's see, let's have a real crime. So it went to county court. So here's what they did. They called me back here. They had an officer come over. They asked me for the old ticket. They took that. They wrote me a new ticket to the county court. So they changed the venue on you or, yeah. Does that sound like a proper procedure to you? And I understand you're right. What is your background? I'm sorry. Uh, planning. Planning. City but you planning. have a college degree, right? Yeah. So you're an educated person. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I so, would say so. I've, I I'm not, don't even have that. I don't even have a bachelor's degree. I have experience in IT. I have worked on okay. associates, yeah, okay? That's fine. Yeah. Um, I've seen in movies and other places, and I've looked it up afterwards when it happens to me. What happens when a judge can't prosecute a case? He's supposed to say, I'm recusing myself for this reason. I'm like recusing my assistant because I just spoiled him by threatening this guy with him, right? Mm -hmm. Here's your case. Take it to the court. Who was his assistant? Was I don't it, even know who's his employee. Or he said it, he's assistant. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe secretary. I don't know. I don't, he said my assistant twice, and I have it on record. Yeah. So I think said, it's I'm gonna not be sure, wrong. Moses. Just listen for a second. Uh -huh. I think when we put before the city council the reappointment of uh, Judge Sachs, which is coming up on November 13th, mm -hmm. I think in that resolution appointing him, there's also a named assistant. So it's a backup. So it's basically a that backup shouldn't be an assistant. That but, should be but a, maybe, yeah, maybe another it's a, independent equal judge. Right. Correct? Yeah. Okay, so those are obvious things. Come on, you don't so, have to, yeah, be so maybe to we can, understand that. So maybe we can clarify that. Yeah. I don't know what I'm saying is I don't know if it's his employee or someone that he has power over. It might be a separate attorney from I don't a separate know that law either. firm. What so I do know we'll find out. is I clearly understand the underlying sentiment of what he said to yeah, me. Yeah, okay? but his assistant was going to take over He's, the case. He could deport me for this. Mm -hmm. And his assistant is going to be in charge, and their judge will not allow me to present evidence. Did you take that, Those as, a three things. You take that as a threat? That you'll be deported? Yeah. It's a crime, mm -hmm. it, and there is a statute for threatening people with deportation. I don't know if you knew that, now you know. Thanks it's a crime. So if you told me, hey Moses, shut up or I'll get you deported, mm -hmm. that's a crime. If you go and report me, if you know I'm illegal and you go report me twice, that's not a crime. Okay, because that's not blackmail, that's not threatening, threatening somebody. Okay. But to threaten somebody that if you don't behave, if you don't plead guilty, if you don't plead non-contest, we'll deport you, that's a threat. Except if you're a judge, you kind of have immunity, so you can threaten people, but is that a moral or ethical thing to do? Br really briefly, I, I, you, can, I understand your point. you can have this verified. In the law that governs the municipal judges, it says that a municipal judge cannot and should not act in any way that undermines the peoples uh, that are under his jurisdiction confidence in the integrity of their court. Mm -hmm. So if you ignore everything I've said and you just look all the facts that are a matter of public record, that will shake your confidence in the integrity of this court. Yeah. Right. I understand yeah. what you're saying. So, so, they, so our court, the municipal court, what you call the clown court, they they wrote a new ticket and referred this to county court. Exactly. Okay. Just want to make How sure would you call a court where you can say, this is a joke, I'm not coming back, walk out and never come back? Would you call that a real court? I wouldn't. Okay. So that's why I call them a clown court. I got it. So what I'm asking you mm -hmm. uh, as the city manager, mm -hmm. if there is a review process, I would like not me mm -hmm. and my wife's been witness to these things too, but the prosecution has happened against me to testify in front of the city council mm -hmm. and uh, on the record of all this and see if there is anything in the actions of Paul Sachs that maybe should question whether mm -hmm. the city should consider a full-time judge who doesn't do anything on the mm -hmm. side, whether you guys should, I don't know, but uh, the whole thing within we could, five we days. We could put out a, uh, uh, for these types of contract positions, you basically put them out the bid. You put out, you ask for proposals from qualified lawyers that can serve as judges, and then you get proposals, you get the bid ones. So uh, it, it could be a competitive process. So that could be something that, uh, a point that you could make to city council if you wanted to. The other thing you need to do, Moses, is when you follow this agenda on November 13th, mm -hmm. uh, this item will show up under what's called consent agenda. So consent agenda is, it can be four or five things that's approved under one motion. So you know how they go, motion, second, all in favor, aye, all opposed, nay, 
so so it's they bulked will, in with other. It's bulked in with other, but the city council can pull things off that agenda, and, and, at, and the people. council president will ask, "Is there anybody in the public that wants to pull anything off this agenda?" So when you appear on November thirteenth, just make sure you're there for that agenda item, mm -hmm. and you can say. Uh, yes, Mr. President, I'd like to pull agenda item number eight or nine or whatever it is, have it on your uh, iPad or whatever you have, mm -hmm. or make a note of what agenda item is and pull that agenda item, and they'll pull it, and then they'll go through, then it'll come up for discussion separately. Do you understand that? Okay. Yeah, I understand okay. that. I good. will do that. That's, that's good. Yeah. Um, so I just want to make sure you're fully informed and you thank don't, you. I appreciate that. You yeah, don't I didn't know that. Get, feel like you get duped again because there, I appreciate there that. are. An, there are a number of things in those consent agenda items, so when they get to consent agenda, it'll probably be grouped in four or five things. And, and is that, that council, agenda council will, will, No, it won't be published until maybe a week before, um, okay. a week or two if before the questions, 13th. If I, it's so not after, the first, after the first of the month, look for it. It's reappointment of uh, municipal judge Paul Sachs. Okay. It'll be on November 13th agenda, and uh, have to be at the meeting, and then you can pull it off the agenda, and then the council will discuss it. And, you know, and I'm sure the council president, and I can give him uh, a uh, advance notice that you would be there, so uh, so that they can hear your story. Okay, no problem. Um, so I've been having some difficulties communicating with the council, and they've said, well, you have all these accusations against the city. If this is a legal matter, we can't talk to you about it. We can discuss it, and so on. So I've reassured them, and I've told you, and I've told the city uh, attorney, I do not want to sue the city. I'm not interested in this, okay? okay? People have sued the city before, nothing has changed. What I would like to do is see more transparency into this. I would like to take, mm -hmm. so meanwhile, mm -hmm. as soon as these three charges get pressed against me, mm -hmm. five days after I meet Paul Sachs here, he comes to the uh, county court in the case of eviction, and all he says, Judge Garrett, and at the time, Judge Garrett doesn't know me. He hasn't heard any of what's going on. He said, here's this guy. Here are three criminal charges against him, zero charges against anybody else. They say he's the troublemaker, evict him. And he said, great, eviction granted. Because that was a pretty clear case, right? There were three charges against so one side. that's what Judge Garrett did? Nope. So Judge Sachs, for the eviction case, mm -hmm. used those criminal charges against me as an argument to win this case. So did he appear in court before Judge Garrett? Exactly. As my attorney, while he was supposedly under investigation. So when these things went oh, wait, public... Wait, 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 wait. Who, who, Paul appeared, Sachs. who appeared as your attorney? Oh, I did not have an attorney. So okay. that's, a, that's another problem. That's Why confusing. did I not have an attorney, right? These things happen. An eviction got started against me. As I said, the story is so long, I don't want to take the rest of your day. And I got just, you know, I understand. Exactly, I exactly. I and I think, I think we are kind of got sure. somewhere with well, the issues I had with the city. So I'm good on that. Well, I just want to briefly explain this, and I'll let you go, and I appreciate all your time. No um, after uh, this eviction case came, um, I, I, I'm sorry, what was your question? I lost my well, who, your uh, attorney, you said... Yeah, why well, didn't I have not attorney? Yeah. They filed an eviction. I went and talked to a lawyer. I said, this is what's going on. They're trying to evict me. He said, well, this is crazy. This is an obvious case. We with no problem. I'll take this case. We'll do it. First time he talked to Paul Sachs and found out who my lawyer is, he said, you should take their plea. No arguments. No, I'm not explaining nothing. Why? You should just take their plea. So my lawyer is a lawyer that will constantly, and the only other time I've met that lawyer was in the municipal court presenting cases, other cases he had in front of Judge Sachs, okay? So my lawyer is a lawyer, their lawyer is a judge, okay? I'll be freed from any uh, the, the kind of interaction with Paul Sachs as a judge and subject in the future, but my lawyer will not. Okay? So anybody presenting me against Paul Sachs will then have to deal with Judge Sachs as a lawyer. So that's when it was pretty obvious to me that my lawyer has been compromised and I fired my lawyer. I talked to other lawyers, I got a very similar response. I talked to lawyers from Denver, they want $10,000 to just come here and talk to, just to try to deal with this. Okay? Because of this situation. So do you see how that creates an unfair situation for anybody in Steamboat whom I end up being sued by Mr. Sachs. So you were evicted then in January of 2017 and that was a county Correct. court order? That was a county court order, yes. I see. Yeah. Okay. Right. And did Judge, and Judge Sachs appeared at that court? As a lawyer against As a lawyer against you exactly. on behalf of the landlord. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly.
So in the judgment against right, me, thank you. Put me together here. No problem. Okay. So uh, objectively, the judge should not do anything immoral. He should not get somebody who's clearly on video murdered somebody and find some loophole to free them. That's that's something a judge. It could be legal, and if you're just a lawyer, you can do that. Okay, mm -hmm. so might be immoral, and ethical people who hate you, you can do that. As a judge, you cannot do that by law that regulates their actions. So they win an eleven thousand dollar judgment against me for the trouble I've caused. Right? Right? Eleven thousand dollars. Okay. That's why two years later I'm still talking about what that. was the basis for that? right four thousand dollars for Mr. Sachs's fees. Mm -hmm. Okay. Hundred and fifty dollars a month mm -hmm. for the electric bill. That these guys were growing pot on, and I don't even. None of these got discussed. They did not bring any evidence. A ju a lawyers that have shown these judgments, so they said this is a ridiculous case. This needs to go back to the court and fixed. And I'm gonna do that. I'm not asking you to fix that. Mm -hmm. What I need to know is when I go against Mr. Sachs against in court, are the police gonna start pressing charges against me? and the city prosecuting me. That mm -hmm. I want reassurance that I can get a fair trial in my day in court without the city resources, prosecutor and police are used to maliciously prosecute me. Mm -hmm. That's why I'm here today. Because I feel like you are the one who has that authority. Because every time I talked to the commander, I wasn't happy. I said, well, who's his boss? And then I talked to the judge and I said, well, if I'm not happy with what this judge does, who's his boss? Mm -hmm. And that's how I ended up saying, people telling me, well, the city council appoints the judge, so if you want to know, you need to go talk to them about that. Mm -hmm. And I'm just going to leave this at that, and um, as I said, all the details are very long and not yeah, necessarily as important. I get it. That's so, what you're um, saying. But I think I... So you want assurance that the city resources will not be used to malicious... malicious no, which is a law. Yeah, anyone, not just me or anyone. Um, mm -hmm. So, um, have you you know what I mean when I say separation of powers? I know what separation, separation of, powers. of powers. So you've got uh, legal, or you've got uh, judicial, um, executive, and legislative uh, sure. arms sure. of government, sure. and uh, and I'm in the executive branch, so I have I have limitations on my power. Sure. Yeah. And uh, I'm good. I'm, I'm glad you get that. Over here is the judicial part, mm -hmm. and as a city manager, I. I the, the separation of powers is that I should not be able to influence the judge or influence the court. Or so any I, specific case. Uh, yeah. But it is up to you uh, to see if that judge is morally sound and if the court is, has integrity or not. So or if it's not your personally, then the city council. Then counts. the city council. Thank you. So exactly. you, answered, you answered the next question, which was, I do not have authority over the judge. I have no supervisory authority. I have no appointing authority. So there's yep. that separation of powers there. Okay. The city council does have appointing authority over the judge. So there's a little bit of overlap there between the legislative branch and the And you report and the to the city council and I about all the these city things council. Else. So I can I can bring things to the city council's attention and uh, and I will certainly advise uh, the council president of of your case and, and your concerns and your wishes uh, before you appear on November thirteenth okay. and, and I'm willing to do that. Okay. Well, I really appreciate that. That's what I wanted from you and the city council. Yeah. Um but in terms of evaluating the judge, how the court behaves or, or performs and so forth, that is, um, uh, it should be an independent, objective function. Our court should ind uh, operate independently and objectively. And the city council appoints the municipal judge. So uh, what I can do is, like I said, is I can advise the council president of this uh, before November 13th, and then his appointment comes back up. Uh, my suggestion would you, would be to when you appear before council, uh, appear with as many facts as you can and as many dates as you can, mm -hmm. and, and be as calm as you can, Moses. And I think that will help your cause. And um, uh, and let them know other other courses of action. I've had, you know, I've been doing this for about thirty years, and I've had uh, people accuse governments of corruption and graft and, and everything else. I've been accused of that stuff. I've been investigated by, I've been reported to the district attorney and the FBI and and I've been investigated and so forth. And, and exonerated, I, and I'm, correct? I'm, I'm, I'm an honest guy. 
I haven't done anything so you've wrong. Been exonerated. That's why I'm still yeah. here. Exactly. Yeah. Well, he can be investigated. There could yeah. be found like, hey, he did nothing wrong whatsoever. Yeah. Show it to the public, and the people will agree that he's done nothing wrong, right? Because ultimately, the when I got a ticket, it said work. the people of Steamboat Springs versus Moses. That's what my ticket said. Okay? Yeah. So ultimately, you guys represent the people of Steamboat Springs. Mm -hmm. And if you do wow. something that they don't... Wow, you didn't know that? <laughs> or No, I thought it was your landlord and Paul Sachs that were... The, in the criminal you. case. In I, the criminal case. When you oh, charge okay. me with disorderly conduct, that's right. what it says. When the police do that, exactly. The exactly. Right. So if the police did that maliciously, wrongfully, and the people would not agree with that, then you're misusing the authority given to you by the people. Yeah. So... Yeah, I don't disagree with that. Yeah. So that's... That was my point, and that's so I wanted to talk to you. So. Great. Well, thank you. I, I appreciate you coming in and taking the time. I understand your frustration. Yeah. Um, this went okay. on for months. Yeah. As I said, I've never dealt with any of this before. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I was extremely on the verge. Um, yeah, mm -hmm. in, in your, your home where you can't go away, I couldn't just leave. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it was pretty frustrating. And never being prosecuted in my life, I had to show up in court, present, uh, defend myself because I didn't have a lawyer. Mm -hmm. So I appreciate okay. your point that we're humans, that you're a human and I'm yeah. human, so we do have our limitations. And we also have emotions. And emotions are evolved there for a good reason. People get angry when there's something unacceptable going on. And that's why we have anger. It's not a sick thing, it's not a wrong thing to have in and of itself. You have to look at the context and if that anger was justified or not. Sure. And defending your home and family is one of the cases where people, most people would get angry. I understand. I really appreciate your guys' time. Thank All right. Very much. Yep. Thank you. Yeah, I appreciate you coming down. I'll walk you out, show you the way out. And you got that written down, right? Um, November 13th? Yep.